is Tyler TJX Survival. I'm here with Joe. We're at Rabbit Stick and we're going to have a little discussion on flint and steel. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so we're here in some period specific camping. I'm gonna let Joe discuss a little bit about who he is, why Flint and Steel is important, and talk to you a little bit about his setup. Thanks. You know, I really uh, I have a great love for history and, and along with that is, is what the people used in the old days, you know, from the 19th century and into the 20th century. And here I've kind of set up an early 20th century camp, but you're still using some of the old skills. And one of them is using flint and steel uh, the same type of fire method that the Plains Indians used, the mountain men used, um, even up into later on, even the cowboy era, even though there were matches, they called them lucifers. Uh, but this is a good, reliable source of, of ignition, uh, whether you want to light a campfire, you want to light your pipe or your cigar. And it involves three things. You've got to have some type of steel striker uh, that's been hardened enough uh, to, to be able to uh, shave off sparks and this is just a piece of flint, it's actually a, a musket flint, but it's able to, to throw a, a pretty good spark um, off of it. And what you have to do, you know, you can take this flint and steel and you can throw sparks all day. It's not like one of those ferrum rods where you can throw a spark into a bundle like this and catch it on fire. These throw very fine sparks. And so the first thing you have to do is you've got to have some type of char cloth. And char cloth is a natural material that's been burned without oxygen. They usually use a tin can of some type and you're going to go ahead and burn the material, uh, not allow the oxygen into it by using just a small vent hole, but it chars the cloth and makes it black. Same principle they use in making charcoal briquettes. So this natural material here will catch a spark very easily. And what you'll do is you'll lay this against your flint, and then when I throw a spark on it, You can see right away that it's smoldering. And you'll take a bundle. The more you blow on it, the greater your coal is. And then you're going to transfer this to your tinder bundle. Same principle as you use with a bow drill, a hand drill. You've got to have some type of ignition. And you cup that around it, keeping your material tight. So what kind of material can you use to char with? It's got to be any type of natural material. Most people will use cotton, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> canvas, you know, which was around that time period. But you can also use different types of fungus. Uh, you can also use types of punky cotton wood. Uh, any type of wood that, that you can char just a little bit. You can do it right on your campfire. In fact, you can take uh, charcoal out of your campfire and actually get a spark to go on it also. Um, once you pulverize just a little bit, and because it's charred, it's the same thing. It's a little more difficult to do, uh, but if you want to make char cloth in a can, and they did, they had tin cans, uh, tin containers, and with a lid on it, so you could put any type of natural wood material in it. The, the punkier it is, the better. It tends to char a little better. But most times people just use cotton material. Uh, even in a survival situation, we have cotton on. You always have some type of cotton on your, on your body, and even with a modern time with a steel water bottle, you can take a steel water bottle put your material inside of that, cover it with just a flat rock so it keeps most of the air from, from going into it, put it on your campfire and you can char natural material and then hit it with a spark. If you find natural flint in the woods, you can use your knife, uh, especially the back of your knife, and you can use it too to create that spark because all you're doing is you're scraping fine pieces of metal um, off of your knife so it's still able to use it without having a regular flint and steel kit. So there's lots of ways that you can still achieve the same purpose by just striking that spark on it. It's a really good technique to have in case you, you know, running out of your lucifers. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it's the smell of sulfur, and that's why they were called lucifer because yeah. it smelled like sulfur. And then, you know, you can step it up a little bit, you know, by going with a big lighter, but I really like these, these lighters here. 
uh, trench lighters they were from World War One, and it kind of fits in with my setup here, which is you know early 20th century camp. Um, it was just called smoothing it rather than roughing it, and that's the kind of camping I like to do. There you go. All right, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the setup, maybe the the other campsite or anything? When I decided I want to set up this type of camp, you know, I looked at some of the old shelters, and Colonel Whalen had a uh, camp set up, and what it was was a tarp shelter. Um, that was called a whaling shelter, and so that's what I built over there. It's just a lean-to with a fly on the front, and you can set it up different ways. So that's my campsite where I sleep, um, which is very early uh, 20th century. And then usually you had some type of setup so that you could cook under it, eat under it, or under weather. So for here, uh, I made a couple of just simple flies, uh, set up a lean-to setup, and then I've just got my old cook box and canned foods, things that would, could be preserved without refrigeration to allow you to, to camp in the woods. So it works out great and, and I try to make as much of it myself uh, so I have a better understanding how things were done. A lot of times in permanent camps that were set up for a week or longer you need some type of, of cooking set up and so there was always available blacksmiths in the different villages that would put together these fireplace irons and really these irons were copied out of the old colonial houses that had their fireplaces set up inside. Um, you had some type of irons that you could use to hang your pots and pans off of uh, that were able to set uh, skillets and coffee pots on. So that's what I did here. This is just some hand forged uh, ironware that I made up. Kind of going a step modern, you know this is an interesting uh, setup here because basically it's just a disc blade um, with some bolts on the bottom of it, but it allows me two things. One, I can build my fire off the ground with it or build a fire under it and I've just got a skillet that I can cook on here also. So it serves kind of a dual purpose, but it's a little more modern, um, but it looks old. Uh, of course, there was always a tripod period uh, of set up camp here. You see a lot of cowboy camps to where you just hang a pot from the middle of it uh, to spend over the fire. Um, so for me, you know, this type of setup here, uh, normally would be on with a ground fire, uh, but with a fire danger here, we've got to keep it in a, a pot contained. But it really works well because I can do a lot of cooking on this, uh, not only for myself, but with, you know, a larger group also. So this is my camp. And again, set up kind of early 1800s style. Um, with the old wooden cot, World War II, trunk of clothing, um, even my sleeping bag. Um, before they were called sleeping bags, they were called sleeping robes. And this dates back to the turn of the century also, uh, where they used to have uh, sleeping robes uh, for camping, uh, particularly popular up in the upper northern states. But it's a great bag made out of down and of course the wool um, on it and a liner. And then I just supply myself with wool blankets, but this is a pretty comfortable camp and it's really a four season type of camp also because you could lower the front of it down uh, to close it up. I could have a campfire here in front if I needed to. So this would be a great camp to set up that's easy to do, cut your poles, um, different configurations that I can do with it, but very early style camp. Uh, the tent again was, was just really designed by Colonel Whalen who did a lot of um, camping and this was his setup here that he come up with so I decided that I needed to have one so I just made it. So I'm here at Rabbit Stick and it's an amazing place of a group of people, an eclectic group of people that even though I like to do the early 1900s uh, time period but I'm, I'm gathered here with people from all walks of life with all types of skills and backgrounds that are so diverse that are teaching amazing skills that are craftsmen and you know, in, in the work that they do. And so I'm super excited to be uh, here at Rabbit Stick. It's a great gathering of people. Um, you know, this is the place, if you wanna learn not just primitive skills, but all kinds of skills, this is the place to come. And, and you're gonna learn from some of the best in the country, without a doubt. All right guys, hopefully this has been valuable to you. If it has, please hit the subscribe button. Joe has a couple places that you can go check out more information on him that I'll let him, he'll let him give you. And then I will leave links to those in the discussion box below. Thanks. You know, I was lucky enough to be on Naked and Afraid last season. It's called The Darkest Hour. I was in Namibia, got to survive for 21 days using basic, simple skills, and I really rocked it. 
So I've got a Naked and Afraid fan page, uh, Facebook page. I've also got Art of the Wilderness, where I post a lot of photo blogs about details of camp from different time eras. It's really about survival through the ages, and that's what I really want to push is what do the old people do uh, to live in the woods uh, for centuries? And so I'm kind of working on that with some photo blogs and you know, so it's a great opportunity to be here at Rabbit Stick meeting some amazing people. Yeah. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, hit the subscribe and thanks for watching TJX Survive. Bam. Thank you. Yeah, that's good information. Oh.